We are in Active Directory, and we're on a Windows 2016 server, but this can apply to any domain controller. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do loopback processing and explain what that means. So let's start out by going in our domain controller from Server Manager to Tools to Group Policy Management, because this is where this is going to be applied. Let's take a look first at where the loopback processing is, then we'll discuss what it all means. So we're going to go to the default domain policy, but you can go to any policy, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to go and edit that policy. So let's go ahead and expand that policy. And we're going to go to the computer section. So we have computer, which applies group policies to the computer, or user, which applies it to the user logging in, regardless of the computer. But a loopback processing uh, setting only is going to be set in the computer configuration. So let's go ahead and go to the policies section, administrative templates, system, and then we'll go to group policy. There we go. Expand that a little bit so you can see it. And then on the right hand side, this is where all of our different settings are. Uh, we're going to look for configure user group policy loopback processing mode. And we found it. Scroll down a little bit. So let's go ahead and double click on it. You see right now it is not configured. So we'll go ahead and expand that. So let's go ahead and take a look. We do want to enable it, and we have two options. We have the replace mode and the merge mode. So let's talk about what each of those mean. So as far as the definition goes, what is loopback processing? So loopback processing is a computer configuration setting, and it enables different group policy user settings to apply, to, to apply based upon the computer from which the logon occurs. So in other words, you're going to get different results, whether you're logging into a kiosk type of computer, a mobile computer like a laptop or a desktop, based on how these things are set up. So like I said, there's two different modes here. We have merge and we have replace. Let's take a look at the merge mode first. During loopback processing in merge mode, user group policy objects process first, but with an additional step. So following the normal user policy processing, the group policy engine applies user settings from group policy objects linked to the computer's organizational unit. So what's the result? Well, the user receives all the user settings from the group policy objects applied to the user and all the user settings from the group policy objects applied to the computer. So it merges these two together, both the user settings from the uh, policies that are applied to the user and the user settings that are applied to the computer. That's what the merge mode is all about. So for example, let's say that we had a policy that applied to the user and a policy that applied to the computer. Well, in this case, the computer policy would win if there's any kind of conflict. Then let's say that there is a policy that applies only to the user. Well, that will get merged in to this particular link. If we have another policy that applies only to the computer, that will also get merged in. So what, so what we'll have is user settings, computer settings from different group policies. And if there's any conflict, the computer policy is going to win. Now let's take a look at the replace option. That's going to work a little differently. So in the replace option, loopback replace, uh, it's a much easier concept. So during the loopback processing, the user settings applied to the computer just replace those applied to the user. So what it's really doing is it's just skipping the group policy objects linked to the user's uh, organizational unit. So if there's any policies applied to the user's uh, organizational unit, they're just ignored. And you just have the computer policies applied only. So this is uh, where it's very useful if you're going to be using a kiosk computer or uh, some other computer that you don't want these things to apply. This also is really useful for terminal services or remote desktop uh, services, as we, as we call it now. So when you log into the remote desktop service uh, server, then if you use the replace option, it won't apply all the user settings. So for instance, if you have, say, a redirected folder uh, that goes from your My Documents or your Documents uh, folder to the server when you log into your regular desktop, 
desktop, that won't get applied when you log in using the replace option uh, because it'll only apply the computer policy for that particular terminal server session. So that's just an example, you know, one example that um, it you know may work for you. So uh, the replace option, like I said, it's much easier to understand uh, because you're just skipping uh, the user group policy objects applied to the organizational unit where the user exists. However, the merge is definitely a more complicated type of thing, and it's always a good idea to use the resultant set of, set of uh, policies so you can see exactly what's going to happen before you apply it to a user. And uh, you could also use the uh, group policy modeling wizard uh, to see what's happening as well. So if we go ahead and go back into the group policy management, you can see the uh, group policy results here that where you can set it up to see what the results are going to be uh, before that user goes ahead and logs in. So that way if there's any conflicts or if it looks uh, different than what you expect, you can go ahead and make changes. So that is a loop back policy and the explanation of the merge and the replace modes.